Parshas Bechukosai. This week's parsha begins. Per Chavav Pasuk Gimel. In Bechukosai Telechu Vesmesosai Tishmeru Vaasi Semosam. If you walk in my Chukos, we're going to translate that, or we're going to examine that more uh, deeply in a moment. But let's just for now just translate it simply as laws or statutes. Rashi will take issue with that in a moment. Uh, and you do, and you observe my mitzvos, and you do them, or you guard my mitzvos, and you do them. Then Venosati Gishmechem Beitam, and I will give you your uh, rains in their proper time, and the land will bear its its bounty, and the trees of the field will grow their fruit. In other words, that if the children of Israel do their part uh, with in their relationship with God, they follow God's law, they do His will. Nature will reciprocate in kind, and the land will be fruitful. So let's look at these three phrases in the very first verse. We have chukos, mitzos, and then vasisamosam, shmiros and mitzos, and asiyas and mitzos. So the Shari Aaron on this verse says, I think quoting somebody else, says that uh, mitzos are generally fallen into um, one of four groups. There's uh, edos, mishpatim, chukim, and mitzos. Edos are things that uh, by their by their nature, they tend to give testimony to uh, God's um, uh, presence in history. So Shabbos, uh, Yom and Tovim are considered uh, edos. They, we give witness to God's intervention in history, his uh, being the main player in history. Then we have uh, chukim. Chukim are uh, f- frequently rendered as mitzvos whose Logic, whose reasoning is not immediately evident to us, is not easily accessible. So examples of that, there are many, but examples of that uh, are shatnes, you can't wear uh, um, wool and linen in the same garment. Um, Paraduma, the uh, red heifer whose ashes purify somebody who's become tummy, who's been spiritually defiled, while at the same time they defile the person who sprinkles the ashes on the person who's tummy. Those are chukim. Then you have mishpatim. Mishpatim are considered to be civil laws or laws that apply bein adam l'chadiro, between man and fellow man. And then you have mitzvos, which is a, uh, a kolbo, a general category of all the other mitzvos in the Torah, according to the Shari Amr. Now, um, you can call them all mitzvos, and a particular type of the mitzvos is called mitzvos also. And that's actually not unusual, he observes. Um, the Torah and Chazal, the sages, frequently describe groupings or sets of individual members with a name when one of the members has the same name. So, for example, uh, Kochavim means stars, and the rabbis ascribe names to many of the stars. One of the names of one of the or the name of one of the stars is Kochav, star. You have the group Kochavim and you have Kochav. You have the Sheva Rikiin, the seven heavens. And uh, one of them is called Shrakim, one is called Ma'on, and one of them is called Rakia. So you have Rikiin and you have Rakia. You might add, for example, Etzbaos, fingers, Bohen, you have Zeres, you have uh, the, the, the Kamitsa, and you have the Etzba. The Etzba is what we call the pointer finger, and the general category is called. It's ba'os. Um, you might even say uh, food. The general term for food, we might think it's ochel, but if you look closely in Tanakh, it's usually called lechem. Now, we understand lechem to be bread. Bread is a type of food. So it is a, a member of the set that has the same name as the general category. So now we get to the question of what does this um, term, chukosai, mean? So you might think it means laws the way we just explained it. Rashi says, quoting uh, Medrash um, uh, Sifra, uh, otherwise known as the Torah's Kohanim, he says, You might think that means that you should observe the mitzvahs. But wait a second. When it says, and you should guard or observe my mitzvahs and do them, that's talking about mitzvahs. Says it, mitzvahs. Then chukim, or chukosai, must be something else. So, that, Phrase of mitzvahs is already taken. So, so what do I say? Bechukosai refers to. So, it must be shetiu amelim batorah that you will toil in Torah. So, first of all, we we need to understand. I think that um, words can have 
multiple meanings, and their meanings can shift depending on their usage and the context. And sometimes words have, according to the understanding of Chazal, interchangeable meanings, but when they're used together, then the context forces us to um, attribute different meanings to them. So as Rashi says, if you would just stam regularly, just say chukosai, you would say, oh, that means the chukim of the Torah, the, the laws of the Torah there that perhaps are not immediate, whose rationales are not immediately evident. Uh, but he says you can't say that because that's that's within the general category of mitzvahs. So it must mean something else. What must it mean? That you must toil in Torah. Hmm. How do how do we get from, okay, we're eliminating one possibility to falling directly into something which doesn't jump out from the words, that you should toil in Torah. But there's another phrase, actually it shows up a couple of times, where we have chukim, chukos, and, and halicha together. And that is, in the negative sense, a prohibition. Don't follow in their laws, referring to the laws of, or the chukos, we're going to talk about what it means in a minute, the practices of the non-Jews, whether they're Kamai Seheretz Mitzrayim or Kamai Seheretz Canaan, whether they're like the Egyptians or the Canaanites, who did all kinds of things that we're not supposed to do. Uh, there's another um, uh, prohibition, uh, do not follow in the Chukos of the non-Jews, and Targumunculus there translates in both cases Chukos to mean Nimusim. They're uh, perhaps conventions, popular conventions. Now, it certainly doesn't mean they're mitzvos. First of all, what mitzvos do they have? They have Sheva Mitzvos B'nai Noah, the seven Noahide laws, which are prohibitions. And um, the Torah wouldn't tell us not to follow that. What it means is, according to most Meforshim, it means uh, their practices which are inconsistent with Judaism. Now, most uh, notably, the category of prohibited activity is within is is in the area of uh, either pritzus or avodazari, either licentious or modest behavior or pagan worship. So, uh, for example, Ramosha Feinstein says that uh, if somebody wears a uh, uh, clothing that is uh, very revealing, impermissibly revealing, not only is that person violating the laws of Tzniyus, but that person is also violating the biblical pro- prohibition of because that's what that's a non-jewish style it's not a jewish style uh one might also say uh, there's a there, there is a common habit where somebody says uh something good is happening and then they knock on wood that knocking on wood is probably uh stems from a vodazar but even if it doesn't according to many meforshim if the the practice of the non-jew has a logic makes sense then it's permissible um, if it doesn't make sense, but it's a convention, then it's likely impermissible to do, such as knock on wood or things of that nature. Um, the Vilna Gon goes so far as to say that if there's something positive that we've done and then it was adopted by uh, non-Jews in their ritual, that we can no longer do that. So the Vilna Gon, even though it's quoted in Shulchan Aruch that we uh, decorate the shul, for example, for Shavuos with greenery, the Vilna Gon says you shouldn't do that because of Chuk so I'd like to suggest that actually, um, just like the prohibition is don't adopt foreign practices, b'chukosai telechu may well mean adopt Jewish practices. In other words, even if they're not mitzvos particularly, but they're Jewish types of practices, uh, one might say culturally consistent with the Torah. We're not necessarily talking about bagels and locks. We're talking about things, uh, uh, practices in chesed and other things which have their basis in Torah but they're not specific fulfillments of requirements. Nevertheless, there's a culture of a Torah type of life. Now, the way you adopt a Torah type of life is by learning Torah. And perhaps the, when the Torah's Kohanim says, Shetiyu amelim Torah," the way Rashi phrased it, is that you, whatever you do, amal means hard work. Vayares amolenu. And they saw, the, and Hashem saw our hard work when we were in Egypt. Um, Adam uh, la uh, yulad. Man is born to toil. It's hard work. We work hard with whatever we do. We work hard. And what perhaps the Torah's Kohanim is saying is shetiu amelim that whatever hard work you do, it should be b'Torah. It should be with Torah. In the Litvish yeshivas, in the yeshivas that I learned at, there was a constant refrain of amelus b'Torah of working hard and learning Torah, and that's certainly a valid concept. But it's not limited to simply the, the, the scholarly 
learning of Torah, but it's also in whatever you do, whatever you're a male in, whatever your involvement in, in this world, it's shetiyu amelim ba Torah. That the Torah should always be what informs how we approach the challenging things in life. And the only way we'll know how the Torah informs us is if we learn Torah. Have a good Shabbos.